Okay, next let's talk about the reel. This is gonna be a lot quicker because the reel to me is, of the three components here, it is by far the least important. Uh, it may be the sexiest, right? Our reels all look so cool. Like this one here is a, an OG. It's the original uh, Daiwa Zillion. And I absolutely love this reel, but it has nothing to do with my success on the water using this lure or any other lure. It's just a nice, smooth, very robust reel. What I would like to share is the gear ratio. Now this isn't hyper important. I don't want you to go out and buy a, a reel in this ratio if you don't have one. Whatever you have, you can make work. Just speed up or slow down depending on, you know, the ratio of the reel. But if you're gonna go buy something or if you have a multitude of reels to choose from, I would recommend a six three to one. It's a good all around ratio as we've always heard for all lures, swim bait, traditional or otherwise, six three to one's a nice ratio. And uh, what it allows you to do on this one is because this lure uh, is very buoyant, right? It's a hollow uh, injection molded bait. It comes up pretty rapidly, so it wants to stay on top. You do have to kind of work a little bit harder to keep it down. Um, so when you're going and you want to go very, very slow on top, you want that super slow crawl of a wake, which is really where this little guy excels and what he does different more so than any of those other wakes out there. You don't have to be hyper conscious of it. You don't have to keep reminding yourself, slow down, slow down, slow down. With the six three to one, if you just go generally slowly, you're there, and you're gonna get that perfect super slow wake. Um, you could get a slow reel, you could get a five to one. That would make that super slow wake that it excels at very easy, but then when you want to crank it down, you'd be going crazy, you know, reeling so fast. Uh, conversely, guys, if you have a seven one to one, or even an eight one to one, again, don't buy new gear. You just have to be a little bit more conscious when you wanna do that. I'll keep coming back to it, that super slow crawl you really are gonna to have to be mindful of your retrieve speed. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna still stay on top, but you're gonna go fast. And again, just where this lure truly stands out is that crazy slow crawl. On the flip side, cranking. I do crank it a lot. Look behind us. We got a very windy day. You see all that kind of uh, ripple on the water there. Um, I'm gonna be going subsurface with this until that w wind dies down. I'm gonna be cranking it down in that kind of one to three foot range. Six, three to one, it's not laborious right it's not not hard to do i have to keep kind of a good moderate pace and you know i'll burn it when i want to get it down on the first part of the retrieve just to get it down to depth uh but it's nothing i really have to think about you know just drop that rod tip reel it at a kind of a moderate fast retrieve you're there uh if you see a spot that you want to you know you see some cover whatever just let it float up it'll get there real quick six three to one again i don't have to think about it too hard i just slow down and i'm doing that super slow crawl so again guys don't buy anything new, but if you can choose, a 6-3 to 1 is probably the optimal ratio for the little shell cracker here. All right, guys. Now, the next component, and much, much, much more important than the reel, is the rod. This is going to be the lifeblood of your, your system. It's going to dictate how far you cast. It's going to dictate uh, if you're able to do sh shorter, accurate casts, right? It, matching your rod to the type lure is going to be the difference between... You having a really enjoyable experience out there, not only using the lure, but also successfully hooking and landing fish, and you thinking that maybe something is, is wrong. So let me share with you what I have, because I think it's going to surprise you. This rod here is uh, from Falcon, and it's called the Falcon XD Cranker. The XD refers to extra deep. Now, I think a lot of people wouldn't associate that as a swim bait rod, but I have to tell you, this has been my go-to. I probably use this more than any of my other swim bait rods. I use a lot of these kind of moderate sized, hard body treble hook lures. Um, I've used the Matt Lures Hardgill a lot, seven inch MS Slammer, nine inch MS Slammer. I use them on this rod. Uh, but specifically talking about the G2, this lure here remembers 1.5 ounces. And for all intents and purposes, guys, it really is just a crankbait. It's popular in the swim bait world. People are always talking about it. So I think they, they hear the swim bait word, they throw it on a swim bait stick. They put it on something rated to one to four, one to five ounces. It'll work. You can cast it. You're going to land probably a good amount of your fish, but it's not the right combination. And just having that stiffer stick is, you know, no different than in traditional baits. You don't want to put smaller treble hooks on a rod that's heavy. It doesn't make sense in the traditional world, and you really don't want to do it here with these heavy swim bait sticks. These are average size hooks. Uh, so the benefits of this rod, guys, let me give you the specs to start. It's rated at three quarters of an ounce up to two ounces, although I often exceed that. I go up to 2.5 and even three doing some lob casts. Um, it's seven foot, nine inches in length. It's a heavy power, and it's a moderate taper, and that just reads like a perfect set of criteria for this lure. 
here's the benefits that it affords you on the water. That moderate action and that appropriate rating to the rod, that three quarters to two ounce, puts this guy at one and a half ounces right in the sweet spot. A little bit to the higher end, but Falcon, I think, rates this a little conservatively. Um, you can really, really bomb the lure. And that's something you can't do if you put it on a true swim bait stick. You're gonna get distance, but not like this. This is gonna load deeper, it's gonna impart more energy. You're gonna be able to get those long casts, which really pays dividends when you're using it as a wake, but really when you're trying to cover water and crank it down above those grass beds and you're really using it in the capacity of a crankbait, longer cast is a deal, right? Time in the water. Not only that, even if you're making little short, accurate roll casts, if you have a very, very stiff rod and barely any of the rod is loading, like just the tip is, the release is more of like a flick. Very, very hard to be accurate when your rod is too heavy for that which you're trying to pitch or do like a little roll cast. You need it even in those short range applications to load progressively. So <laughs> this thing here, guys, I have so much confidence. I routinely use it for pitching into little, little tiny pockets and application that I think a lot of people wouldn't do. They think it's a little crazy to put a treble hook lure in there, but I've gotten so many of my strikes putting this little topwater bluegill in those areas. And the only reason I could do it reliably and effectively is because the rod's a good match. And I could, you know, it's like, it's like pitching things into like buckets or, you know, um, solo cups or accuracy. You can do that when you have the right rod. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's just a great, great marriage. The moderate action, uh, of course, when you do get that fish, is very forgiving. It helps to keep these hooks pinned. And um, yeah, it's just the right rod for the job. Now, I'm not particularly endorsing the Falcon. I'm sure there's other manufacturers that make a similar rod with similar specifications, but I can attest to this one here, guys. I've been using it. I probably got these around the same time. I've had the rod and, and the lure both about six, seven years. And I've used it on my other combinations. I have a lot of swim bait rods in that kind of one to four, one to five ounce range. I'll try it, but immediately I come back here because you could just, you know, a couple casts, you could see how great of a match it is on this and how kind of misappropriated it is on those heavier rods. So, um, yeah, guys, Falcon Lowrider XD, great choice for the Shellcracker G2. Okay, last part, and a very, very close second to the rod in terms of importance is the line. Um, the line setup that I use here, guys, is braid. Now here's the, what's different, what I do different. I go to a very, very long leader. I typically use about a 10 foot leader. And I've used everything over the years, guys. I've used straight mono, straight copali, and while this isn't really a floral application, I've messed around with floral, I, I come to this. Now, truth be told, this braid to kind of leader setup is something I use on almost all my rigs. Just about all of them I use that, and what I'll change is the length of the leader and the type of leader I use based on the lure where I'm fishing it in terms of cover, you know, all sorts of things, but if I want more stretch or less stretch, if I need it to be clear, fluorocarbon, all that kind of stuff. So for here, guys, what I like to do is that braid going to a very long leader. I typically use about 10 feet. I like that. It's a nice round number. And here's the logic behind it. If you have the little shell cracker here, if you have that guy properly matched to a rod, and again, this, this Falcon is a, is a really good match, it's going to load deep, and that's important. That's going to give you a maximum ability to bomb it and to cover water. Now, while this excels at a wake bait and tight to cover, it also excels as a crankbait, right? It's really two lures in one. There's gonna be times where you have that chop on the water and you wanna crank, tick the top of those weeds, get it down two to three feet. Like any crankbait, guys, you, you stand a better chance at catching fish. The longer it's in the water, the longer your cast, right? So you have a rod that loads, it can get maximum distance. What you want is the ability to make sure you're getting that that hook set. Now, I used mono for a long time and I got most of my hook sets, but I would I would miss some out there. And I started to wonder, can can I do any better by having a little bit less stretch in my line? Because I already have a stretchy rod, right? I already have a very parabolic rod, which I like because it allows me to get the most out of this lure. But I thought, you know, when I set the hook and I would look at video, that rod, this rod really, really, really flexes. And when I used to use it coupled with mono, that's a whole lot of flex in my system. And on the occasions where I would get those strikes at maximum casting distance, like sometimes you bomb it out there, it goes 100 Might feet, 110 feet, feet, and as soon as it hits the water, you get that strike, and occasionally I would miss it. Was that an average fish? Was it the fish of my lifetime? Well, I'll never know, because I missed some of those. So I said, well, let me try braid, right? Let me go braid going to a leader. I know I want to use a leader, and the braid affords you that positive hook setting experience. I use 10 feet, 
because when I do bomb it and I get about 100 feet, that means that 90% of my line, right, 90 feet out of about 100 when I'm bombing it, is braid. So without question, I still have, you know, retained most of that authoritative, non-stretch hook setting power. But I got a full 10 feet at the end of stretch there. And that's not to be discredited. That mono, any brand of mono typically stretches about 20%, some stretch more. So I got stretch in my mono, a full 10 feet of it. I got all the flex that's happening on my hook set in my rod. And what I have found, just the way it's played out over the years, is that I see those long distance hookups, they go up. I just, I very, very rarely miss a fish now. Long distance, close range, whatever it is, that combination of having braid with a decent amount of stretch in that last section there, it's good stuff. Um, the other option is say, say you're coming in and you're right by the boat, right? You're about to bring the lure in and the fish tags you right there. Well, now you don't have almost any braid out. Now almost all your braid is already in your rod and you know on the spool. If they hit at the boat, you're probably getting that hook set just on mono. So when you just knee jerk reaction and set the hook, you're not gonna rip those, those hooks out because again, this is just like a, a big crankbait, right? Those aren't giant hooks, these aren't giant jig hooks. A lot of times the fish swipe at it, they don't always inhale it. So when that happens, you get that strike near the boat, now you have that long 10 feet of mono and you're much less likely to just rip them out as if you were on straight braid. Um, not applicable if you're doing a full mono system, right? That you'd still be in good shape if you had a full mono system, but you lose some of that long distance hook setting power. The other reason I like it, guys, is say you don't have a net. Say, now you should have a net, right? Stop right now and get a net. <laughs> but say you don't. Um, what happens, right? And say, let's just, a lot of hypotheticals, say you have the fish of a lifetime near the boat. What are you doing? You're holding your one hand out like this. You're down here, right, trying to get the fish near the boat. How much line do you have out at that point, right? You probably got about eight, nine, ten feet of line from the tip which is up here to where that fish is splashing on the water, you're giving yourself more cushion, right? You have, you have the flex of that 10 feet of mono, which is all that's gonna be flexing, all your braids in here, right? It's all been reeled in, it's either along the blank or on the spool, so your braid is not playing a factor. It's not gonna rip those hooks out. Um, and that's another uh, reason why I've kept a lot more of my fish pins when I get them to the boat is because I have that flex in the system, not only the flex of the very parabolic rod, but the flex of that last kind of 10 feet being mono, it's an insurance policy. That's basically the way to put it. It's an insurance policy for just giving you a couple extra moments to land that fish. Now, some of you guys might be saying, you know, um, boat flip them. Well, here's the problem. If you have a rod that's really mated well for this lure, you're not gonna boat flip them, right? This rod is rated to two ounces. I might be able to boat flip a little guy, but I don't really care if I lose a little guy. I'm not gonna be able to boat flip a six, seven, or eight pound fish. Or for you guys who are in waters where they get bitter, bigger, you can't boat flip a 10 pound fish on a, on a, crank, on a two ounce crankbait rod. So it, that's, that's a non-starter. You do have to land them. So the main thing is have a net. But if you don't have a net or you lose it overboard or whatever it is, guys, that last 10 long, that long leader, that 10 feet is a big, big time insurance policy when you got them by the boat. Here's another thing. <laughs> I know this is going a little bit long. But because most of that system is braid, when I'm bringing this, when I'm cranking it, it's a shallow crank and I'm bringing it over those weed beds, invariably there's gonna be weeds that are higher than others, I'm gonna get caught up. It's no different than when you're fishing like a rattle trap over the top of weeds. I'm, I've ruined that cast now if I you know, pick up those weeds. And say it happened on a really good spot. I don't wanna drag weeds in. I might blow up that spot, I might scare fish or whatever. Having most of my system as braid allows me to do the usual, right? I can allow a little bit of slack in my line, pop that slack really hard, and most of the time, maybe two thirds of the time, I'll pop off those weeds. You are not gonna pop them off if you're running mono, you are not gonna pop them off if you're running copali, and because this is a floater, I don't see why you'll be running fluoro on it, and fluoro still stretches too. The braid allows you to pop off those weeds most of the time and still have a viable cast for however much more line you have out. Um, so it, it excels there as well. So I, I just think it's the kind of the best of all worlds. And like I said, guys, I use this on all my systems. And just depending on the lure, uh, I'll use oftentimes shorter leaders. But on this guy here, I just want a lot of stretch in my system. Parabolic rod, braid for the long distance hook setting, going to that very, very long mono leader. So I have stretch, a little bit of stretch on the hook set so I don't rip them out, but still a strong hook set. I keep them on for the duration of the fight. 
Oh man, my battery died, but I think we pretty much wrapped it up there, guys. So it's just all about the system, right? It's just all about the cohesiveness, the marriage of parts, giving you the best possible chance at the success of the entire process, the three-step process of making sure you first get the hook set. Nothing else matters if you don't get the hook set, right? These other components don't even come into play. Keeping that fish on during the duration of the fight, and then once you get them close, the moment of truth, keeping them pinned in those worst case scenarios where they just have that one little hook on the outside. When they have it swallowed, we don't have problems, but we always want to account for the worst case scenarios, right? It is that insurance policy, so that at the end of the day, we're telling the story of the one that didn't get away, but it was so close, versus seeing the fish of a lifetime slowly swim back into those depths. You never want to see that. Get the right components, guys, and not the right components, but again, this is just what I've used, and I'm passing it along to you because I've seen my successes increase. I've seen more of my hookups been completed, the fish stay on during the fight, and really at the boat, I lose, I never lost a ton, but I almost never lose them now, and I have to believe that the difference is really having that very, very long mono leader as that shock absorber in the system. So give it a try guys, it's just line. Try it out for a season or whatever. See if it works for you. See if your, your numbers go up, your success goes up. If not, you know, go back to whatever you were using. But once you try this, I think you're gonna like this system.